Imagine a future where your thoughts could betray you, where your brain is no longer a sanctuary but a playground for hackers and corporations. This is not a plot from a dystopian novel, but a potential reality brought to us by Neuralink, the brainchild of Elon Musk. Neuralink is a brain-machine interface designed to connect humans and computers, an ambitious goal that promises to revolutionize our world. Imagine increased intelligence, improved memory, and better connectivity. Picture a world where individuals with disabilities regain their independence, where their thoughts alone can control computers and mobile devices. This is the promise of Neuralink, a future where the line between human and machine blurs, where we merge with artificial intelligence, enhancing our capabilities beyond our biological limits. But like all things that shine, it casts a shadow. And the shadow of Neuralink is long and filled with uncertainty. The concerns are numerous, and they are serious. Brain tissue damage, privacy invasion, addiction to this new form of connectivity, these are just a few of the potential dangers that lurk beneath the surface of Neuralink's glittering promise. The costs, both financial and personal, could be astronomical, and the potential for failure looms large. As we stand on the brink of this new era, we must ask ourselves, are we prepared to deal with these risks? The long-term effects and risks of brain-computer interfaces are still unknown. What happens when our minds are open to manipulation, not just by ourselves but by others? What happens when our thoughts, the last bastion of our privacy, become just another data point to be collected and analyzed? In the pursuit of progress, are we opening Pandora's box? Beyond the physical dangers, Neuralink presents a myriad of ethical dilemmas. As we delve deeper into the implications of this groundbreaking technology, we cannot ignore the potential artificialization of humans and the dominance of technology over biology. Neuralink's mission to create a seamless interface between humans and machines is undeniably revolutionary. But with this innovation, we tread into uncharted territory. Where is the line between human and machine? When our thoughts can be translated into digital commands, are we not, in essence, becoming more machine than human? And if so, what does this mean for our understanding of human nature? our identity and our place in the world. The concept of merging human consciousness with artificial intelligence is not new. But with Neuralink, it's no longer just science fiction. It's a tangible possibility. This raises a host of ethical questions. For instance, if our thoughts can be decoded, what does this mean for privacy? Who would have access to this data and how could it be used or misused? Another major concern is the potential for inequality. Neuralink, like any groundbreaking technology, will likely be expensive and out of reach for many. This could create a divide between those who can afford to enhance their cognitive abilities and those who cannot. This neuro-inequality could lead to a new class system based on cognitive enhancement, further exacerbating existing social inequalities. Moreover, the competition for enhancement could lead to a society where cognitive augmentation is not just a luxury, but a necessity for survival. In a world where your job, your social status and your future prospects depend on your ability to keep up with the enhanced, the pressure to augment could become overwhelming. As we stand on the brink of this new era, we must ask ourselves, are we ready to redefine what it means to be human? Are we prepared to navigate the ethical minefield that Neuralink presents? These questions are not just for scientists and ethicists to ponder, but for all of us. After all, the future of humanity is at stake. Neuralink's journey to innovation is not without controversy. Forging ahead with the ambitious goal of merging man and machine, Neuralink has made headlines for its groundbreaking technology. But beneath the surface of this futuristic endeavor, a storm of controversy brews. In its quest for the future, Neuralink has received the green light from the FDA to conduct clinical trials in humans. This is a significant step forward, given the potential of the technology to change the lives of those with quadriplegia, allowing them to control digital devices with their thoughts alone. But this milestone is not without its share of controversy. Allegations of mistreatment of animal subjects have been leveled against the company. In the pursuit of scientific progress, it's crucial that we don't lose sight of the ethical considerations that accompany such research. The welfare of the animals used in these trials is a matter of concern and has led to serious questions about the methods employed by Neuralink. And then there's the matter of brain data. With the implant sending brain signals via Bluetooth to a computer, the handling of this sensitive information becomes a critical issue. In an era where data is the new oil, how will Neuralink ensure the privacy and security of the user's brain data? Will we trade off our thoughts for the sake of convenience or a promise of a better future? 
these controversies surrounding Neuralink's trials are not just about the company or its technology. They are about us, our values, and how we envision our future. In this race to the future, are we overlooking the mistakes of the present? Neuralink's promise of merging human brains with AI could lead to an unexpected casualty, the human self. As we delve deeper into the intricacies of Neuralink, we encounter a chilling prospect. What happens when a human brain is replaced by an AI device? Is it an upgrade or a form of digital self-destruction? Cognitive psychologist Susan Schneider presents a startling perspective, likening the integration of human brains with AI to suicide for the human mind. It's a stark image, our consciousness, our very essence, wiped out, replaced by cold, unfeeling artificial intelligence. This is not a simple matter of replacing a damaged organ with a synthetic equivalent, but the potential obliteration of our selfhood, our identity. This raises profound ethical and philosophical questions. What makes us human? Is it our biological makeup or our consciousness, our ability to think, to feel, to dream? If we replace the human brain with an AI device, are we still human or do we become something else? A cyborg, an AI in a human shell, and what of our rights and freedoms? If our thoughts are not our own but the product of an AI device, can we still claim to be free? Can we still claim to have rights? Or do we become mere puppets, our strings pulled by the whims of artificial intelligence? The potential implications are staggering. It's not just about the loss of an individual's identity, but the potential loss of our shared humanity. If we all become AI-enhanced beings, what happens to our shared human experience, our collective memories, our common bonds? Do they too become a casualty of this brave new world? The promise of Neuralink is enticing, the chance to enhance our abilities, to transcend our biological limitations. But in our pursuit of progress, we must not lose sight of what makes us who we are. Our humanity is not a weakness to be overcome, but our greatest strength. In becoming more than human, do we risk losing our humanity? As we stand on the precipice of this new era, we must ask ourselves, what are we willing to sacrifice in the name of progress, and more importantly, what are we willing to preserve? Even as we speak, Neuralink finds itself in hot water with the law. The U.S. Department of Transportation has launched an investigation into Elon Musk's brain implant company over potential violations of federal law. This scrutiny has been prompted by the Physicians Committee of Responsible Medicine, who presented records suggesting that Neuralink may have been involved in the unsafe packaging and transportation of hazardous pathogens. These allegations center around the movement of implants that were removed from the brains of monkeys. The concern is that these implants may have carried infectious diseases, which would be a clear violation of federal law, if true. This is a serious charge, one that could significantly impact Neuralink's operations and credibility. But that's not the only legal trouble Neuralink is facing. There are also reports of potential animal welfare violations. Internal complaints have surfaced about rushed experiments, which allegedly led to unnecessary suffering and even death among the animal subjects. If these allegations are proven, they could result in severe penalties and further tarnish Neuralink's reputation. These legal issues add to the growing concerns about Neuralink's practices and compliance with regulations. From the ethical implications of their technology to the potential harm it could cause, Neuralink is under intense scrutiny from various quarters. It's clear that the path to innovation is fraught with challenges. And for Neuralink, these challenges are not just technical, but legal and ethical as well. So we find ourselves asking, is Neuralink's path to innovation paved with legal and ethical transgressions? As more information comes to light, the answer to this question could shape the future of Neuralink, and indeed, the entire field of brain-computer interfaces. Neuralink's innovation is part of a larger trend, the rise of brain-computer interfaces. This burgeoning field of science promises to unlock new frontiers of human potential, offering both tantalizing benefits and unnerving challenges. Imagine a world where we can augment our intelligence, enhance our memory, and improve our connectivity with the digital world. A world where individuals with disabilities can regain lost faculties, where quadriplegics could control computers and mobile devices with their thoughts. Brain-computer interfaces could restore a sense of self and autonomy for many, offering a glimmer of hope and a promise of a better quality of life. Yet, as with every technological leap, there are potential pitfalls. Brain-computer interfaces could lead to cognitive changes beyond their intended applications. 
we could see shifts in personality, alterations in sexuality, and other unforeseen transformations. While these changes may seem far-fetched, they are genuine possibilities that we must consider as we continue to blur the line between biology and technology. The brain-computer interface market, valued at nearly $5 billion in 2021, is projected to double by 2030. This growth signifies the potential for non-medical applications in the future. We could see brain-computer interfaces become part of our everyday lives, influencing how we work, play, and interact with the world around us. However, as we embrace this new technology, we must also grapple with the ethical implications and potential inequalities it may create. Will access to these enhancements be available to all, or will it be restricted to those who can afford it, creating a hierarchy of value? As we stand on the precipice of this new era, we must ask ourselves, are we ready for the mind-bending future ahead? As we've seen, Neuralink and its ilk present a future that is both tantalizing and terrifying. A future where our minds could be enhanced, our memories improved, and our connectivity to the world around us like never before. But this brave new world also holds potential dangers. Brain tissue damage, privacy invasion, addiction, and the potential for a new hierarchy of value based on artificial enhancements. This is why it is crucial for us to stay informed about the developments and potential risks associated with Neuralink and similar technologies. The pace of technological advancement is relentless, and it is easy for us to be swept away by the promises of a better, smarter future. But we must not lose sight of the potential pitfalls. We need to foster public discourse about these technologies. We need to ask hard questions and demand clear, comprehensible answers. Who will have access to these enhancements? How will they be regulated? What are the long-term effects on our brains, our identities, our societies? Moreover, we need to consider the ethical implications. Are we willing to risk our very selves for the sake of progress? How do we balance the potential benefits for individuals with disabilities against the risk of creating artificial divides among people based on their access to, or refusal of, such technologies? Regulation also plays a crucial role in this scenario. It is imperative that we have robust regulations in place to ensure that technologies like Neuralink are developed and used responsibly. These regulations should be designed to protect individuals and society from potential harm, while also fostering innovation and progress. Finally, we must remember the importance of our own agency in this process. We are not just passive recipients of technological change. We have the power to shape the future, to influence the direction of technological development, and to decide what kind of world we want to live in. The future is coming, whether we're ready or not. Stay informed, stay vigilant, and remember. The mind is a terrible thing to waste. As we conclude our journey today at AI Future Hub, remember that you've stepped into the future where artificial intelligence shapes possibilities. Hope you've benefited from our cutting edge content. If you haven't subscribed yet, now is the time. Show your support by hitting that like button. Share our videos and spread the future. Don't miss your chance to be with us again on this journey by subscribing, liking, and sharing. Until next time, keep exploring the future with us.